All right, so this is the column painted, and it's a, supposed to be a chassis black, but it's a little shiny. I don't know, I'm kind of going to leave it because I don't want to redo that. Some of the dash will probably end up like this too. It's not perfect, but it's very little of it that's seen. First I separated the two halves and I'm going to slide this collar back over. Once I got it past these wires it's real easy. Now I have to attach this back like that. So I put some electrical tape on this wire. So it doesn't chafe because there was some chafing going on. I know I'm going to have to reuse this wire pulled through the other side. Um, and then it's going to get spliced in here with the uh, wire harness from the late Mustang. This is an interesting thing right here because you would think that there's some sort of a clip that goes in a hole in the, in the column part right there. Um, but it looks like there's just bolts that hold it in place. I had the same concern that someone else had. Um, I found a video on YouTube that uh, the person shared that there's nothing but those those bolts right there with the square heads that hold the column sleeve uh, turn signal assembly to the column. And uh, let's tighten it up and see how it goes. I almost forgot I need to pack this bearing with grease so it moves smoothly. To adequately pack this, I have to work from the other side, so I'm going to have to take the uh, turn signal switch and loosen it off again. Besides, this uh, turn signal lever needs to get some lubrication underneath of it. I cleaned it up underneath where it was um, had some abrasion from this being threaded in too far. And what the? Why are you pushing on me? This is where I used my grinder and smoothed out the uh, abrasions inside this turn signal part. Alright, it's packed from both sides. Kind of like a wheel bearing. And then uh, and it turns freely and now the turn signal part is also greased up. And I greased up the contacts so this flips nicely now, both sides. I found that to slide the wire in without chafing it so much I had to flatten the wires out as I was taping them so they're not a round bundle. It's a little bit round there but I got them in there nice. Well it's assembled and it actually looks quite beautiful. There's a there's some orange peel in the paint but that's not noticeable unless you look super close and if I'm gonna end up cutting the end of this I may end up sanding it and painting it over once more and uh, this would be a good first coat it should be a little bit more dull anyway as a flat finish because uh, it's really kind of shiny but it's all back together all right here's the Orgeson steering unit That's nice. It is heavy. If there's any question that it's a Borgeson unit, it's cast into the part. For the next step, it's going to take two people. Somebody holding this from the inside and inserting the bolts from the outside. So grab it and climb in. This is my helper, my son. 
It's always good to have a helper son. Where's this going? Inside. You have to climb inside. Set it on top for me. Tilt it up. A little higher. There. So, that screwdriver is going to help you hold it while I stick this in and line it up. Alright, rotate it a little because I got to see light and I'm not seeing light. I don't know if you can see where this screw is coming out. There, can you see? Line it up for me. Okay, good. I'm reusing the old washers because it didn't come with washers. The okay, bottom one's not working. Use the screwdriver handle to help you lift. There we go. Okay, tip it a little bit. Back and forth, up and down. I want to catch more than one thread. Lift, lift the whole unit a little. Alright, pull the screwdriver out. Okay, rock it up and down a little. I can't tell where it is. Can you tell? Pull it away from the frame a little. There it is. There it was, hold on. All right, I'm gonna start this slow and pull it in. tight so let me look at the threads do me a favor put this screw in the bottom hole on your side I want to make sure the threads are good okay so we ran that in through the other side it seems like there's just dirt in the threads or something but it went in okay from the other side right yeah very smooth all right, this side's still not being fun. There, that backwards turning thing I taught you about in the previous video should help. There it goes. All right, now I don't know if this is lined up. Good, I'm gonna loosen a little bit. Is the whole unit still loose? Like, no, it's secure. I mean, like tilting. Can you lift it at all? No, to, it's it's secure. It's not, it's give, not no give at all. Maybe that's why that good. that is a tight fit between the three bolts. That's why it's not. All right, that's temporary, anyways, because I might need to space it out once I put the shaft on to see how it lines up. Sure. Back joint. It goes on the top of this. We'll give it some flexibility so this should be pretty much square and straight in the hole. Somebody else I was watching doing this on a 68 had put an extra washer underneath the bolt on one corner because it wasn't lining up with the hole very well. But this looks really well lined up. I'm going to look from the inside. Yeah, I can't complain. That looks like it's right in the middle of the hole. Perfect. Oh, thanks for the peace sign, yeah. From the picture that comes with this equipment, it shows the metal curved part of the universal joint as going to the column. And only fits one way because this side of the column has a bigger diameter right there in the steering wheel side so this drops right in doesn't even grab this side goes in with a little resistance a little friction and that's about the whole way in next I'm going to remove the uh, original column Leave spacer, I'm not sure what you call it, um, and put this one in, which has a smaller diameter hole, and you can tell it's meant for centering the column because the uh, 
bottom of the column is no longer stiffly supported because of the rag joint that's going to be over there. So this is a little bit smaller diameter. It's got some studs that face to the inside and then the clamp will go around that and the column. Okay, the bolts that hold that sleeve in place, they, uh, they appear to be 5 sixteenths. The two on the right are pain because they're right in alignment with the, uh, with the pedal, the accelerator pedal. That one's a little bit more easier to reach, I think. I guess it just held this rubber seal in place. That's all it was about. Turns out 5 sixteenths is the same as the 8 millimeter. I use my little 8 millimeter box to uh, loosen this clamp on the uh, fresh air cable. Ooh, it's still in there, good. Well, it's a little better with that hanging straight down out of the way. Time to put that column support on the bottom uh, of the column and onto the firewall. You could start the screws by hand or you can uh, reverse the uh, drill bit and then turn it till you hear that. That's the thread falling into its old space. Based on the angle the column has to come through, I bent this tab up a little bit so it's easier to insert the column. Well, I'm about to start cutting off the uh, steering column, and I'm not sure how much I need to cut. I went ahead and bought this saw. It's uh, actually intended for my axle tubes for the Explorer rear end that I'm going to put under that Mustang. The saw was super easy to set up once it's unpackaged. There's nothing that needed attaching. Just loosen the chain and it's ready to go. Holding this in place where it's lined up for the holes. I can see that I'm a couple inches off. I'm going to measure it with my other hand. Now I found I was one and three quarters of an inch from lining up, um, meaning it had to come out that much farther. But the problem is it's already way past the shaft and the uh, rag joint. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and take off one and three quarters just for starters. No. No, I need to take off more. I'm going to put the rag joint on and remeasure this and I'll get back to you. If the rag joint is supposed to be completely seated, then it's about three and three quarters of an inch to the flange. So I'm starting with the outside extra, three and three quarters of an inch. And then I'll take off the other inch and three quarters, I think it was, as needed as I get closer and sneak up on the amount I actually need. I set it so it's going to cut about four inches off, a little bit more than the three and three quarters at the tape. So we'll start from there and I'll remeasure it. That's like a hot knife through butter. And that is 30 seconds short of four inches. I decided to take a rag and an old long paint, paint stick to try to 
get some of that glass bead out of the inside of this column. There's a fine dust of glass bead in there. Because the bottom of the column has to end right at the hole because that's where the rag joint ends. I'm going to measure to that point uh, from the bottom of the column to determine how much needs to be cut off. For right now I'm going to take the rag joint off and install the column where it belongs. I decided to put some tape on there. It'll be easier to see where it needs to be cut. Okay, so took it right to the line. I know there's a little bit of adjustment inward, upward, inside the car because I had it at the bottom most position for the column. I hit the end of the column with a little paint so it doesn't rust. So turning the rag joint around, I, I discovered it has three and a half turns. So that's one and three quarters back. If I want to have it centered, it's not quite pointing straight down. It's one. One and a half, that's about one and three quarters. It feels a little tight in that area. There's no fluid in it. It appears from all my turning that I figured out the uh, this this looks like it's center with that roll pin facing straight up. So I'm just going to slide this on in that location and test it again. Good thing I checked it. I was 180 degrees out. If I wanted those set screws to be facing up, so now I got it just right. Okay, so there's my dimple on the spleens of the shaft, and then I'm going to touch it with my grinder. Should be good enough. 5.30 seconds should have been the right size. And I didn't put any Loctite on there, thread locker, yet because it's likely to come off uh, when we're doing a lot of other work to the car, body work and such. This is a first assembly. Turns out this can go on here two ways, but it looks like from the video from part one that it came off like this because I didn't see that tab at all. So that must face down. This shows the range of adjustment. There's a little bit here. It could be positioned that much. Remember to put that uh, rubber seal on before you put the column in. This is gonna be assembled to a driver state before it's taken apart for paint. I just set this on top before I set it in place and push the screws up. So it turns out when I'm measuring this again and the sleeve is installed correctly, the hair more than 11 and 1 eighth, but not enough cut off out here. So yeah, that's weird, but I guess I had my C-clamp underneath the column on backwards. And so this brought the column down some. So back to the tape and cutting again. I'll give you a total amount I cut off after I'm done and I add it up. After the last cut, it looks like I have about an eighth of an inch of space between the rag joint and the top of the com or the bottom of the column. I may need to adjust the column up just a hair once I put that uh, bushing back in. 
So I've tightened this down, but being it's evening already, I'm going to have to put a mark on the shaft and on the rag joint so I can line them up again after I grind down that flat spot a little bit. We'll do that tomorrow. I added all the pieces together as precisely as I could, measuring, of course, the pieces that still hang off. And I got six and one sixteenth total. Next I'm going to spray some of this PB Blaster on this steering shaft to prevent it from rusting. This is amazing stuff. It removes corrosion from aluminum wheels like I had on the, one of my cars that uh, I didn't want to have to polish the wheels and I just accidentally discovered when I was spraying this on the lug nuts that it caused the aluminum wheels to be, uh, the oxidation came right off and they stayed shiny. It's an amazing product. Get a little on the rag. So I forgot to put the sleeve on the column. So I took the column out and then I realized this might be easier to insert and line up my little mark. Especially working by myself. Sure is easy to see if it's lined up or not. I was one mark off, now it's right on. I'm supposed to have about a sixteenth of an inch of clearance. Uh, we'll see what happens when I put the column in place. Final product. That looks beautiful. One sixteenth of an inch for sure. Rotates. Fairly easily. With power it'll be great. Okay, I concluded that uh, it needs to be sticking out 2 and one eighth inch to made up with the original steering wheel. And that'll be the right depth as well to give me just a half an inch more for the uh, adapter. Okay, when all said and done, cut off six and nine sixteenths of an inch from the column so measuring it from there it's 24 and a quarter or from the hole and okay, measuring it from the end to the bottom of the hole I have 14 and 3 eighths no it's actually a little more 14 and 7 sixteenths. Directions are a really good thing to use sometimes and uh, after reading them I find that they provided a screw and said to drill a hole to keep this bottom bushing in place. Shortened another half inch exactly and with the screw holding the bushing in place. Of course, painted up to not rust. The screw has to come out until this passes through the sleeve that secures it to the firewall, and then the screw will go back in. And I anticipated that, so that's why I put the screw on the opposite side of the hole so that it's facing up. When I say hole, I mean this one. So on the opposite side of that, Is the screw so I can stick it in easily in the engine compartment well it's finally in place it took a bit of work I had to loosen the flange piece that the silver shiny part this one so that only one screw was holding it because it was a little bit tensioned off center nothing like when that uh, first column was in here. Okay, so I set the uh, 
spacer back in place so the columns in the center okay the column ends up about one eighth maybe three sixteenths shorter and after measuring this it's about a sixteenth or so longer than I wanted but we sized it based on the original steering wheel and how it's seated with a tiny gap and plenty of thread so there's a little problem assembly time I've put some grease on the back of this contact and now it gets lined up with the double dots facing up and as a test fit I have more threads to grab with a bolt now but we might have sticking out too much because I didn't know this but the limiting factor for how deep this fits and at first I thought it was because it was coming up against this flange but it turns out it was the right size there it's limited by where it comes in contact with this edge right behind the, the tooth part. In order for this column to seat the hub, one eighth of an inch I measured from the from this edge on the sleeve. To the back of this it would have been a little bit nicer fit and I may readjust it sometime in the future to try to close that up but at least I got all the threads grabbed on the center okay so this is not rotated as you would expect when the dimple faces up but that's because for the canceling cam, this lines up correctly in this manner. In the same token, this has to line up, which is also off center, but perfectly lined up with the wire passage. And this would be correct for the Momo steering. And then because they center up on the top with one screw and the Nardi steering wheel centers up with two screws, so there's a little bit wider spacing as well. These are 70 millimeter. These are 74 millimeter. And so this is going to be lined up perfectly. I didn't close the gap, but it's as close as I could get because the hub doesn't seat as far as the original steering wheel. That just seats farther and by that much, which is an eighth of an inch. And, uh, this couldn't sit flush with this or else I have too large of a gap here so tried to even it out a little bit a little bit more gap on this far side here because it's dark so from a distance eh, looks okay goes on this Nardi horn adapter which didn't come with the adapter for the three hole to the six hole that I purchased sometimes they do but I wanted the smooth billet, like I said before, and that means that uh, this particular one didn't come with it. It's only 28 bucks for this adapter. Um, I do have a set of screws that came with the adapter, and they're fine if I had the steering wheel that uses this type of uh, flat head screw. But my steering wheel has it's a classic design that has this trim ring, which goes over the hex head nuts that hold the steering wheel in place. Well, run into a little problem. These hex head screws, they look stainless, really nice. They came with the steering wheel, do not fit the hub. And they look and, and seem virtually identical, thread pitch and everything. But when you go to screw them in, they're just a little bit off because it's metric versus 1032. Anyway, yeah, when I tried to match them up, they don't work. This black one came with the hub 
and like I said it's uh, flathead but fortunately I have some stainless screws that are 1032 this should work beautifully they've got a knurled head um, and I just have to thank my dad he's gone now 29 years it's a long time to not have my dad he died when I was 25 but I still benefit from things that he left for me like this box of stainless screws that looks sick even without the trim ring these these knurled cap screws stainless they won't rust like some of those other screws could and now for the finishing touch I can't connect it because this has only a single horn connection on the nardi I'm waiting for the other pieces to come in that are the uh, Mustang ones and I'll tell you about that in the future but this one here is definitely a two two wire horn so let's see how this fits and there we are beautiful the hub looks good and this polished spokes looks great against the chrome on the dash and with the door closed it's a good height to hold the wheel there perfect for this is a much better distance from the driver and it's just the right size it's a 14 inch steering wheel which I think is what size it should have been to begin with they say don't go 14 if unless you have power because with manual steering 14 inch steering wheels are harder to work I understand I agree 13 is definitely out of the question but 14 is a possibility if you have Armstrong steering and now to finish that part of the dash and now this is how it looks with the pony dash new steering wheel that side's refreshed the new wood applique and of course dash pads still coming but boy that looks a lot better together yeah the stripes huh yeah